Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. We don't usually think about positions when it comes to chords. That's something that's connected more to arpeggios and scales. But when you're improvising and playing a solo in a chord melody setting, so basically when you're playing a solo jazz guitar performance and you need to harmonize your solo, then it actually does make sense to look at some different areas and positions that are useful in terms of connecting both the melodies or the scales that you need with some chords so you can harmonize them. In the first video I did on this topic, I was looking at one position that's very practical for this. And there is one more position that I think is sort of the main position that you need to check out. And that's what I'm gonna cover in this video. If you wanna learn more about jazz guitar, improve the way that you solo, check out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you wanna make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. In the first video I did on this topic, I was focusing on one position and one area of the neck, which was for a 251 in C, where we had the root of the two chord on the fifth string, and then the root on the five chord on the sixth string, and then again the root of the tonic on the fifth string. So that creates lines like this. And in that video, I'm of course going over different ways of creating melodies here and different ways of finding the notes. But besides that, because of course this is this area of the neck and when we want to play complete chords, then it makes a lot of sense to also use the other place where we have this, because the bass notes that we are playing are usually on the fifth and the sixth string. So now I have the first root here on the fifth string, but I can also have start on the sixth string. And then I have these voicings. So really this is just, I'm sort of turning it into shell voicing because that's just a nice way to play these chords, it's very clear. And that position is what I'm going to explore in this video. This first example here is really just starting with the shell voicing, so that's nice and clear. And when I'm playing the shell voicing like this, which I tend to do when I'm just going through the 2 part one with shell voicings, then I have my first finger out here, and that makes it easy to just go sort of up the scale, so from F up to G, up to A. I'm skipping the B and then going up to the C. And then I'm shifting up and playing this voicing, which I guess is an F major 7 drop 2 voicing. But in this case, we're just seeing it as, as a rootless D minor 9 voicing. And I think a large part of this is really also about sort of getting used to the fact that playing all these different voicings is really just thinking D minor all the time. This is all D minor and I'm only thinking about the fact that it's sort of around here and not really worried about exactly which voicing I'm using or what extension it is. I'm just thinking about the melody because when you're improvising that's what you have to think about and the chords are sort of things that you want to add to it to keep it clear uh, and of course, it's difficult in this setting to make sure that everything stays clear, but the chords are actually still secondary to the melody that you're improvising. So I'm only thinking about the melody and not thinking in individual voicings that much. So, so that's the line on the D minor. Again, really just keeping it practical. Notice that the first time when I'm ascending, the C is here, and when I'm up here, it's up here. Then I'm moving to G7, and here I'm just going, also again, nice and clear in the melody that it's a B, and I'm just playing the shell voicing under it. And then down the scale, back up to the A to play like a G9, reaching under here, and then resolving to the third of C major, which is an E. So one way to map out the melody notes that we have available here is to just look at this shell voicing and then start adding notes. We have this first, the F, G, A. Then I'm skipping the B because I don't really want to have the, the D minor 13 in there. I mean, you can still play it, you would just play it like this or this. And then uh, the C up here. reach all the way up to G 
And right now I'm playing it with the root. Of course, sometimes I'll play stuff and I'll add the root with my thumb. There are all these different ways of playing the chords, which I cannot really put in this. Uh, you kind of have to find versions of this that will fit you. And I also find myself that I actually go back and forth and do different things every time I play it. So it's just good to be really flexible with this. Think more about the melody that you're playing than the chords. That, that's the important part. For the G7, so again, starting with the shell voicing, so F, G, A, B. I'm leaving out the C, but you could, I mean, you could do this, but of course, it's not so beautiful. And then the D, E, and F. And then as you saw in the example, sometimes when I played this, when, once you've played the chord on, on a heavy beat, so on, on the three, for instance, like I'm doing in the example, you can go under it also. Like this, like this, that's kind of what I'm doing in the example. For the C major 7, so we have this shell voicing, so E, I'm skipping the F, G, A, B, and then C, and here I am using my thumb, you can play this like this as well of course, and the D, and of course also like this. I think most of the time I'll actually play this voicing with my thumb for the bass. This example is using the different notes that I just came up with in the previous example. So I'm starting really clearly with a melody that's F on the D minor. So, and then immediately also just letting go of the chord and just playing this arpeggio movement. Essentially what I'm playing here in the melody is an F major seven arpeggio. So, so just letting go of the chord because it's already stated. We don't need to worry about it anymore. And then I'm harmonizing the third beat. And here I'm leaving out the root and then just playing the upper shell and then the melody, which is the C. And then this sort of A minor pentatonic kind of scale fragment. Moving to G7. So we have first the full G7 with a nine because the nine is in the melody. And then on the third beat, I'm playing the chord again, but I'm not playing the bass note. So. to C major and then just adding this small melody as attack. The reason that I can keep on publishing these videos every week is that I have a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. I'm very grateful for their support and it's because of them that I can keep on making all these very specific jazz guitar and music theory videos. If you want to help me keep making videos then check out my Patreon page. If you join us over on Patreon I can also give you something in return for your support. For the first two lines I was using a G7 that didn't have any alterations, but it's also useful, of course, to check out what happens when you start to alter the G7. And uh, in this case, so if we just look at a 251 where we have the alter dominant in there, so the D minor stuff is still the same. These voicings, then the G7, starting with the shell voicing again, the root, of course, still the same, and then we get flat nine, sharp nine, third and then the sharp 11 or flat 5 and the flat 13 and then the C major 7 is the same still. In this example I'm making a few variations with the rhythm and opening that up a little bit and I'm also sort of changing around where I'm placing the chords. And again, this is sort of a practical consideration. So on the D minor seven, I'm starting with this D minor. Notice that I tend to play that with these two fingers, uh, which is just the way that I'm used to doing this. Of course, if you want to play it in another way, you should just do that. And uh, first just stating that the first melody note is an A, then I'm skipping up to a high E and adding a chord under that on B2. And this is practical because when you play the chord like this, and I'm up in this area with the melody, then I can kind of sustain the chord without any effort and then just play small melodies with this. And that's also what I'm doing here. So I'm playing here the E going down to the D and then really just running down the chord. So E, D, uh, sorry, yeah, E, D, C, A, 
G, F, and then to the G7 altered, which in this case is starting on the sharp nine, so. And that's just the scale one, really, so down to the flat nine and up the scale, and then down to the B, resolving to the nine on the C major seven, and then just continuing down the G major triad, so B, and then stopping on the G. As you can probably tell, I don't have sort of a finished structured method. I'm kind of still developing how I'm presenting this material. And that's also just because I was never taught this. Well, actually, I was just never taught this. I just kind of figured it out along the way. I got a few hints and tips and other stuff and combined that. Uh, the one thing that I did do was that I checked out some Joe Pass chord solos. And they are a little bit more difficult to check out than the material that I'm going over here because you have to uh, find your own fingerings. That's not included in those. It's just written out of sheet music. There are no tabs. But it is a very good book to check out and I'll link to that in the description. If you really want to dig into playing like this, then that's something that's very useful to check out. But it's also a lot of hard work. But since I'm still developing how I'm teaching this, then I'm of course also curious about your guys' feedback. So if there's something that I'm not talking about that you think would be useful to include in later videos, then please leave a comment. And of course, when you're improvising like this, it quickly becomes sort of a technical riddle that you have to solve or a problem or a puzzle. But really, you also still want to see if you can create some strong melodies. And in this example, I'm using a motif melody and trying to work with that through the 251. And doing exercises like that are also going to really improve the way that it sounds when you're playing this, because you can actually also get a lot to work if you just have really strong melodic ideas, and then you don't need to play as many chords. And if you're playing a lot of chords, but the melodies are completely random, then it's anyway not going to work that well. So hopefully this is an example of that. Uh, I'm starting on the D minor like this with the fifth in the melody. And then I have this small melody, which is essentially an F major triad. And then a similar movement on the G7 altered, where I'm starting on the flat nine. And then going up to the sharp nine and down to the F. So it's a little bit like I'm voice leading the A and the C down to an A flat and a B flat. And then a different uh, ending to that, which is coming out of the, the flat nine and then resolving to the third of the C major seven and then adding the G in the melody. If you want to check out another video talking about how to construct lines and improvise in a chord melody setting, then check out this video where I'm talking about using the other position and working a bit more with how to construct the lines and how to come up with some interesting melodies. You can also check out the rest of the playlist because it contains a lot of other useful information.